Welcome to our fourth module, which is dedicated to the dihedral subgroup problem. Here, in this lecture, we will discuss the Cooperberg sieve. So it's a sieve procedure that is due to Gray Cooperberg, and the goal of it is given a subgroup which we know, subgroup of DN, which we know to be of the form of the special form that we saw in the last lecture, which is zero, the neutral element, and one element of the form S1, and hidden by a certain function, we uh, want to find the secret S here, the only value that we, uh, whose, uh, the only value we do not know, in time two to the O of square root N, okay? Uh, we're looking at here n being the log of n, so we assume here that we have a modulus of the form 2 to the n, but it's in fact a, um, a pretty straightforward, uh, so it's much simpler to explain, but there is a straightforward generalization for arbitrary n, okay? So here only n to the form 2 to the small n, and we will see how the performance is 2 to the log n, which is going to be, uh, which is uh, uh, quite an improvement over what we would know classically, okay? So first we need to create what is called coset states. So uh, what does this mean? We assume that we have at our disposal two key ingredients. First, uh, we need a uh, circuit that evaluates f the same way we evaluated F in the case of, for example, uh, quantum factoring or quantum search. This means that given A, B, and C, it evaluates uh, the, the it, it returns reversibly uh, the state A, B, C plus F of A, B. The other ingredient is a Q of T mod N, okay? So here, of course, uh, the Q of T mod N is a Q of T mod 2 to the N, which is exactly something that we've seen. In general, you need a Q of T mod N for an arbitrary modulus N, which is something that um, can be done um, uh, efficiently as well. Okay, We just haven't seen it in those lectures. Once we have that, we start with a uniform superposition of all of the elements of the sub n. So that is something we know to how to do with the Hadamard gates. Uh, once we have, and, and so we'll call that state phi zero, okay, which is just the uniform superposition of, of z mod n z times z mod two z, okay. Now we apply to this uniform superposition, we apply the uh, circuit that evaluates f. And so that gives us a superposition of states of the form AB, F of AB, and we measure the second register, the register that contains a value of F. Now, we can only have, we've seen before, we can only have two different values, uh, sorry, two different AB that evaluates to the same value F of AB, okay? And that's because uh, we satisfy the promise of, of the hidden subgroup uh, for a specific subgroup of the form that has two elements. So let's specify this. Assume I measure f of a, b, then for f of a prime, b prime to be equal to f of a, b, the only two possibilities are a prime, b prime equals a, b, or a prime, b prime is going to be a, b, times s1, okay? So these are the two possibilities. Uh, so the only two elements that are left on my states when it collapses after the measurement. So the state has to be of this form, okay? So here we have one of two elements that evaluates to uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the value of f that we measured, and this is the other element that evaluates to f of a, b, okay? We relabel them t and t plus s, um, and, and that is our, uh, our, our first step towards uh, creating the coset state. Now, we apply our second ingredient here, which is the q of t mod n, 
okay? And that allows us to create this state here, okay? So it's a superposition for k, uh, 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 for k from zero to n minus one, and we measure k, and by measuring k, okay, we fix this value, and so we can, we can then ignore it, and we leave the state in uh, a state that is proportional, so up to a global phase, it is proportional to what we call phi sub psi sub k, which is our coset state by definition. So one over square root two zero plus omega sk uh, one, where remember omega is just exponential two i pi over n, okay? So we have here our coset state. So this procedure allows us to create coset states. Now, uh, something that is really important is that we know k, okay? So throughout the process of creating a coset state, we have a coset state that is parameterized by a k, which has been drawn uniformly at random, so we cannot force a given k, so that is the bad news. But the good news is that once we produce a coset state, we know which k is parameterized by, and that's going to be a crucial point in the sieve procedure uh, that we will see in, uh, later in this uh, in this um, uh, in this lecture. So the goal of the sieve is to create this state, which is parameterized by n over two, and that state, uh, given the uh, the shape of the the coset state, is of the form where s is the secret that we're trying to figure out. Now, uh, minus one to the s is essentially minus one to the last bit of s in its binary decomposition, okay? And it also, what's interesting here is that if you apply the Hadamard gate to that uh, one qubit state, you produce the state b, whose measurement will give you b with 100% chance. So what we mean, what, what it means is if at the end of the sieve, we're able to create psi sub n over two, then we learn one bit of s. And then as we'll show in the, at, at the end of this lecture, we can easily iterate the process and learn more bits of our secret. Okay, so first off, let's focus on learning that one bit. So two coset states can be recombined. Okay, so we will see in this slide how to recombine two coset states. So, but get, bearing in mind here that, um, so we have a machine, we have a circuit that produces coset states labeled by k's, uh, by the indices k, and we assume that we have many of them, and we know which indices we've drawn, and then we will pick two of them whose indices we like, and then we're going to uh, put them together through this particular circuit in order to create a new coset state. So we assume that we have a psi sub k and a psi sub l as inputs. So uh, the direct, so the product state that corresponds to uh, this input is given here. So it's one over two zero zero plus omega s k one zero plus omega s l zero one plus omega s l plus k one one. Now, it goes through a very simple circuit where first we apply the C0 gate and then we measure uh, the second qubit. And what we get in the end is this particular uh, state for our, um, uh, for, for uh, so that is after, uh, that's before the measurement, okay? We get this particular state, okay? Now, after the measurement, what will happen is that we will leave the state, the, one, the first qubit, in either this state or something proportional to this state. Now, what we're interested in is producing this particular state, okay? So that will happen 50% uh, of the time, so probably one over two. But we, uh, so, and if it doesn't happen, then we just discard the, the state and we pick uh, different indices, okay? Now, what I haven't said so far is how we pick k and l, okay? So this is very important, is we're not going to recombine any two coset, okay? We want k and l to have very specific properties here in order to progress towards psi sub n over 2. So 
this is what the sieve is doing. It starts on the bottom, so at the bottom of a tree, you know, we will have many, many uh, coset states that we draw, okay? And remember, we know the Xi's, but we do not control which Xi's we want, otherwise we just require Xi equals N over two. Now we will pick, we will try to produce new Psi of X prime I's where at each layer of this procedure, we cancel L bits in the decomposition of, um, of, the, um, um, of the index. So here we hope that this X prime one has its first L bits for L that we're going to specify in a second. We want to have this first L bits equal to zero. Okay, so we need to find the proper X1 and X2 such that X1 minus X2, okay, so we want this to be, of course, X1 minus X2, and we want X1 minus X2 to have zeros in the first L bits. So what it means is we need to pick x1 and x2 that share the same cube, uh, sorry, the same bits in their binary expansion on the first L bits. So it doesn't really matter which exact value they have. All we want is to pair them together whenever they share the same original L bits in their binary decomposition, because then when we subtract them, we will create an index x prime one that has only zeros at the beginning of its binary decomposition. Now we, of course, want to do that many, many times, okay? So we assume that we have an x, x1, xj, we pick them and we recombine that for another element here. So at the second stage of the sieve, we only want psi sub x prime i's where the first L bits of the decomposition is zero. So you have plenty of things, and then at the end of the decomposition, you have L bits that are zero, okay? Now, the question that one might ask is, how likely is this first stage of the procedure to work? So, we need to draw sufficiently many of these elements for this thing to work, meaning that if you have only two random coset states, you're quite unlikely to have those random indices match on their first L uh, bits. But if you have at least two to the L of them, then anything else that you draw will for sure uh, have a match, okay? Because there's only two to the L possibilities of drawing indices that, that defer on their first L coordinates. I'm oh, sorry, on their first L uh, uh, bits in their binary decomposition. Anything else you draw will have, to, uh, will have to match with something else that you've previously drawn. So we assume here that we have at least two to the L such elements. And then we know that once we've reached a critical mass, then we keep producing uh, coset states that will have a match, okay? So we assume that we have this big bag of two to the uh, O of L elements, okay? So that has a cost, of course. Pairing them, you know, is going to cost you two to the O of L. So that is not, that is still exponential in the number of bits that you're trying to cancel. And once you've done that once, then what you want is to continue, okay? So you want to continue to replicate L packet. You want to go uh, uh, blocks of L bits at a time. You want to create uh, psi of indices that have uh, all those uh, original bits to zero until you get this one, which is n over two, which really is, uh, so which has all these other bits to be uh, to zero, okay? And then this is going to take k steps. And then here, of course, so n, remember, is uh, n equals two to the n. And then what you need is to have this property satisfied. So uh, we have to find a K and an L that are, uh, whose product is going to be N because we're basically trying to cancel about N bits here. I mean, not quite uh, N minus one, but 
uh, that is really uh, the, the number of steps that it's going to take. Now, the, what is going to minimize this effort is to take L equals to K, which will equals to uh, square root N, okay? So uh, this will minimize the, the overall effort, okay? And it's going to be an effort that is going to be two to the O of square root N, okay? And so once we pay that price, we are able to produce this final state, okay? And that final state, as we said before, is going to give us the, um, uh, at least, uh, uh, so it will give us one bit of our secret S. And now the next question, of course, is how do we move to the next bit of S? So we know now the bit B, such that S is of this form, okay? And now we can define another hidden subgroup problem on a different dihedral group. I mean, D, instead of Dn, we have D of n over 2, which is a subgroup of Dn. And then here, we define our new function that evaluate xy using the previous function f, okay? Which is f of 2x plus b, y and it's easy to show that it hides the subgroup that is given by h prime which is 0 0 and 1 s prime okay that is included uh, so in d n over 2 so learning that subgroup h prime means that you would learn s prime and learning one bit of s prime means that you're basically uh, learning the next bit of s okay because the first the, the first bit in the decomposition of S, S prime, is the second bit in the decomposition of S, okay? And you iterate this process until you land in, in uh, uh, the, trivial, uh, the trivial group and you will know all the bits of S. So, what we've seen here is a procedure that uses a very simple quantum circuit but still has a lot of effort. And this procedure gives us the secret S one bit at a time. Now we've swept under the rug we've, um, of what happens when N is not a, uh, of the form two to the N, not a power of two, but there is, it's a very, uh, it's, it's, it, ha it shares most of the steps. And so uh, uh, we'll leave some references uh, uh, next to the notes for to show how to do it in the general case. Thank you for your attention.